Welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today, I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for sweet second graders. But as always, everyone of any age, grade, type of learner is welcome to learn with us. All right, we are back for part two of our last week in nonfiction, friends. Oh, do you like this sticker? <laughs> it's funny. It says, sorry I'm late, I had to kiss my dogs, which is funny, I'm not really that late, but Molly is very important to me. I hope you can't hear her barking. I feel like she's been barking nonstop lately. So, how was your day? I hope you're doing good. It felt like fall today, it was so, so nice. Um, it's definitely getting chilly. I definitely have to sit in my car a little bit in the mornings um, and let it defrost, right? I have, um, I told you guys how I, I bought a new car for myself finally, and I have like those um, seat warmers. Uh, so they like warm the seat and then you sit on it and it's amazing. So that's been kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's how I'm doing. Um, it's going good. I'm happy to be back here and we're going to continue on with day two of our so Well, let's go through the objective. What am I even talking about? I will be able to use word solving strategies in nonfiction and identify main idea and key t key details. Both of these things are super important in nonfiction, right? All right, so let's get ourselves in the green zone. All right, get ourselves ready to learn. And then we have um, a book we're gonna read, which we'll actually read this entire book because it's kind of quick. My hair is driving me crazy, I'm sorry. It's just really, it's just really a mess. I don't know, I think the wind got the best of it today. I don't really know what's happening to it, but it's fine, right? Doesn't matter, I can still be a learner. Um, we're gonna read this whole book today and then I think we'll have a little bit of extra time where I'm gonna read you um, a nonfiction book, but it's not gonna exactly feel like nonfiction. So let's do some deep breaths to make sure we're in the green zone. Your three deep, deep breaths. relaxing. Okay, let's get started. Vocabulary. This word, this first word is alive. Alive, that means something that is living, like I am alive right now. Support, um, that means, can mean something that's like held up. You're giving, um, like this table is supported by legs. Um, I'm being supported by a chair. Um, support could also mean help, like I'm here to support you. I'm here to help you through this, right? You've probably had teachers say that to you before. Um, heavy, that means something that's not light. There's a lot of weight to it. And colorful. Colorful means something where there's a lot of color. Do you see anything behind me that's colorful? Yeah, my banner, right, is colorful. Yeah, so the sentence could be like, Mrs. Wright has a colorful banner, full of color, right? Good, all right. So let's get this party started, friends. We are going to remind ourselves of all those amazing strategies that we know because we're amazing. I know you are. And one that we talked about yesterday was to look at the picture and say the first letter. <coughs> Excuse 
excuse me, we talked about how that could be um, a little difficult or feel a little difficult in nonfiction because you don't always have the background knowledge that you need um, to figure out what's happening in the picture or to figure out the word. But it's still nonetheless a good strategy. Like it helped us figure out the word uh, tail. We were able to <coughs> say the first sound and look at the picture. Um, and don't forget, any anytime you're using a word solving strategy, you should always be asking yourself, does this make sense with what my, my um, if you're reading nonfiction, what my topic is about? Does this make sense? Would it have made sense to say like, I don't know, if I'm talking about dinosaurs, would it make sense to say like cats in the middle of a dinosaur book? Probably not, right? So you're always thinking, does this go with the topic? Does this go with what I'm talking about? Does this make sense? Okay? Okay. So let's get started and remembering one of my favorite strategies. And you're probably gonna be like, really? But this one, oh, I hear someone coming. You wanna say hi? Hi. It's not you barking out there? Look through the whole word. Now, I say this because Sometimes we like to just do this strategy. We like to just look at the first letter and be like, yeah, that's it, I got it, right? And guess the rest. But it's important to look through the entire word because it might not be the first letter and then the picture and then that's it. You always have to look through the whole word. So we are going to start reading on the first page, and then we will solve the words as we come across them, okay? So this book is called What Are Dinosaurs? And this is being used with permission from Crabtree Publishing Company. All right, this is the table of contents. What is in this book? It's an interesting table of contents cover. So we're gonna go ahead and just start reading this. What are dinosaurs? Dinosaurs lived long ago. There are no dinosaurs alive, not, not living, they're all dead, today. Dinosaurs were reptiles. Reptiles were animals with backbones. Backbones are a row of bones down the middle of an animal's back. Hmm. Reptiles have scales. Scales are, hmm. okay, I'm gonna come up close to that word. Reptiles have scales. Scales are, all right, I want you to look through, if I could hold it still, that would be great, wouldn't it? I want you to look through that whole word. Okay, this is one of those times I see a p, 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 p at the beginning and I don't really see how the picture could help me with this word. But I know by looking through the whole word, I could figure out some of those sounds. A says ah, at, ch says ch, right? P at, ch is, at ch is patches, patches, patches. Scales are patches of hard, dry skin. Scales protected a dinosaur's body. All right, so it's always, always, always important to look through the whole word. Say all the sounds that you know and never leave off those endings. I could have said, Scales are patch, right? But I didn't because I looked through the whole word and I included that ending, patches. All right, let's keep reading. Hatching from eggs. 
Dinosaur babies hatched from eggs. To hatch is to break out of an egg. Baby growing inside egg. Baby dinosaur hatching. Some baby dinosaurs, hmm, let's look at that one. Some baby dinosaurs, I see S T S T S T A Y Ed. Okay. Oh, I know A Y sometimes says A. St A stay. Some baby dinosaurs stay close to their mothers. Wait, what? Oh, you're right. I didn't look through the whole word. I left off that ending. Let's go back. Some baby dinosaurs st aid, stayed good close to their mothers. The mothers helped them find food to eat. So that was awesome because on the word helped, you reminded me from fixing this one that I had to look all the way through the word. Awesome job, friends. Okay, two or four legs. Some dinosaurs walked on two legs. Looking at those endings now. Their legs were long and strong. Their front legs were more like arms. Some dinosaurs walked on all four legs. Their strong front legs helped support their heavy bodies. Hmm. Plant eaters. Some dinosaurs were herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat plants. Some plant-eating dinosaurs were huge. Some of the, oh, let's look at that one. Some of the, you try this. Look all the way through the word. Yes, longest, tallest, and heaviest dinosaurs were herbivores. Some herbivores had colorful heads. Some had crests. Meat-eating dinosaurs. Tyrannosaurus rex. Carnivores are meat-eating animals. Dinosaur carnivores have big, sharp teeth. Hmm. It says uh, it had very small hands. This carnivore was... Medium sized. It's a T Rex. I thought he was like the biggest one. Interesting. Learn something new every day, guys. Sharp dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs were covered with bony, hmm, pl plates. The plates protected them from enemies. The dinosaurs had body plates on its body had oh that didn't make sense had bony plates on its body it used its spiky tail like a club to fight its enemies Yikes. this dinosaur had very sharp plates it also had a big club at the end of its tail yikes horns on their heads some dinosaurs had horns on their heads and f frills that protected their necks. Their mouths were like beaks. Though these dinosaurs ate plants. This dinosaur had three horns. It's a triceratops. This dinosaur had one horn and four to five, four to six frill spines. This dinosaur had a curved horn and two large neck horns on its neck frill. Wow, a lot going on. The biggest carnivore, whoa, I thought, I totally thought it was the T-Rex, guys. The dinosaur was the biggest skull meat-eating dinosaur. Its skull was long and narrow. Spino Spinoceros? 
Along its back was a large snail that ran from its neck down to its tail. A large sail. Ooh. <coughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> its teeth were long and sharp. The dinosaur may have walked on four legs. I can, <coughs> I'm getting all choked up. I'm so shocked. Billy, Mr. Wright, did you know that the biggest carnivore isn't a T-Rex? It's a Spinosaurus? Yeah, me neither. I thought it was the T-Rex. Sometimes when I learn new things, I gotta tell people right away. What is a dinosaur? Other reptiles lived during the same time the dinosaurs lived. Some had wings and could fly, but they were not dinosaurs. Dinosaurs did not fly. What? I didn't know that either. Some reptiles lived in ocean, oceans during the time of the dinosaurs, but they were not dinosaurs. Dinosaurs did not live in oceans. in this book okay let's talk about my mind is like pfft. let's talk about now that we've done some word solving strategies the main idea let's go back to this section um sharp dinosaurs i'm gonna reread the section and as i oh wait i better put that chart up as i reread i want you to think about what is the main idea what is this text all about and what are the details that support that main idea okay okay here we go sharp dinosaurs some dinosaurs were covered with bony plates the plates protected them from enemies the dinosaur had bony plates on its body it used its spiky tail like a club to fight its enemies. This dinosaur had very sharp plates. It also had a big club at the end of its tail. Hmm, main idea, supporting details. What do you think? What do you think the main idea of this is? Now remember, the topic is dinosaurs. So don't say dinosaurs, that's the topic. What is this part of the text all about? What is this part trying to teach us? Okay. I think you're right. The first sentence, and that's a very helpful strategy to look at the first sentence. We're going to write that as a strategy. Look at the first oh, sentence. Always a great strategy. Some dinosaurs were covered with plates and it keeps talking about these plates over and over again, right? So the main idea is that some dinosaurs had bodies covered in plates, right? Hey, okay, so bodies covered in plates. Now we need three details that support that. Bodies covered in plates. So dinosaurs had bodies covered in plates. So what were those plates for and why did they cover their body? What are details we know about that? Yeah, the plates protected them from enemies, would be a, a detail, would be one of the legs of the stool. Yeah, so it uses the plates to fight enemies. They're bony and I think that's it. Yeah, this is a shorter text, so it might not have three key, de key details, and that's okay.
But the main idea is that some dinosaurs were covered in bony plates. They're bony and they help protect them from enemies. And they also could on top of those plates had like spikes or a club. Wow, crazy. I learned a lot more from this book than I thought I was going to. I did not know all this. But what we've learned about main idea today, what we learned yesterday still stands. The main idea is what something is all about, what the text is all about. And then there are three details that support, that hold up that main idea, that go right along with it. And a one really great strategy for finding the main idea is to look and reread that first sentence. All right? Okay. So, great job practicing main idea. Great job practicing word solving strategies. So, I want to read you a little bit of this book that I really liked. It says, A Place for Fish. And it's kind of like a narrative. And I just, I liked it. It was, it's a nonfiction, but it, it reads like a story. Um, so we're going to read this. And this is A Place for Fish. Whoopsies. And it's written by Melissa Stewart. And it is being read with permission from Peachtree Publishing. The pictures are super pretty. Fish make our world a better place. But sometimes people do things that make it hard for them to live and grow. If we work together to help these special creatures, there will always be a place for fish on the move. A fish swims by bending its body from side to side. Its strong tail pushes it forward through the water. Paired fins on its sides help it to start, stop, and turn. Top and bottom fins help a fish keep its balance. Fish with slim fins and a narrow tail can swim fast. Fish with large wide fins and a square tail swim slowly, but they can turn quickly. Whoopsies. For fish to survive, they need to stay safe and healthy. Some sharks die when they're accidentally hooked by fishing lines. When fishing crews use hooks that the sharks can detect from a distance, fish can live and grow. Hmm, I didn't know that either. Hammerhead shark. Hammerhead sharks have lived on Earth for more than 10 million years, but now they're in trouble. Each year, thousands of these sharks die when they get caught on fishing lines set out for tuna and swordfish. Recently, scientists discovered that hammerheads can sense some kinds of metal fishing hooks. When fishing crews use these hooks, hammerheads know that they should stay away. That's super important. Some fish are harmed by the chemicals power plants produce when they burn coal to make electricity. When people find other ways to make electricity, fish can live and grow, says Northern Pike. As power plants burn coal to make electricity, they pump out smoke full of chemicals. The chemicals mix with clouds to produce acid rain. When the acid rain comes into contact with rocks at the bottom of a lake, the rocks release a material that damages fish gills. How can we help save northern pikes and other fish? By conserving electricity and using solar power and wind power in homes and businesses. It's hmm. a good reminder that your actions impact everything. Some fish are so beautiful that people like to keep them as pets. When people stop catching these colorful creatures, Fish can live and grow, says Yellow Tang. Each year, divers collect as many as 500,000 yellow tangs from Hawaii's coral reefs. They know that people with home aquariums will pay a lot of money for the colorful fish. But now, the number of yellow tangs in the ocean is falling. In 2015, scientists learned how to breed yellow tangs in their labs. 
If people buy these fish instead of wild ones, yellow tangs can make a comeback. Some fish have unusual body parts that people like to collect. When laws stop people from selling special body parts, fish can live and grow, says small tooth sawfish. For centuries, healers in Asia added sawfish fins to their remedies. They thought the fins had magical powers. People in other parts of the world collected the fish's long, toothy snout. By the 1990s, there were almost no sawfish left. In 2014, the small tooth sawfish was added to the U.S. endangered species list. Now it's against the law to sell any part of a sawfish. The fish is still in danger, but scientists hope it will be able to survive. Some fish can't survive when people add new kinds of fish to rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds. When people stop dumping pet goldfish into local waters, native fish can live and grow. Says small mouth bass. Many people buy young goldfish as pets, but when the fish outgrow their tank, their owners may decide that to dump them in a local pond. Goldfish eat smaller native fish such as smallmouth bass and their eggs. And as goldfish feed, they destroy bass nests by stirring up mud and sand. People should never release a goldfish in a natural body of water. Never had any idea. All right, that was a fun little way to end. I hope I see you back here tomorrow for some more learning. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.